Hello again, this is Kyle. Let's commit some code. So you want to contribute to open source and find out most projects use this thing called Git. Um, at first, Git seems really intimidating, but it doesn't have to be if you take it in small steps. Now, keep in mind this video is going to use a GitHub project as an example because GitHub is a really common place for open source projects to live. But many of the techniques described here in this video can be used in other repository hosts or even your own Git network. So the first thing you want to do is install Git on your machine. And you can do that by going to git-scm.com and go to the latest source release and download it for your operating system. I'm using a Mac, so I can use that, but you can also use Windows or Linux. Now, once you have downloaded and installed Git, you can access it through your command line. On um, OSX here, we can access the command line by going to the spotlight and typing in the word terminal, and that will open up our terminal here, as you see here. On Windows, I recommend you use uh, a thing called PowerShell. You can use the start button run and then type in the word PowerShell to open up that. On Linux, you should really know how to use the console if you're on Linux. I shouldn't have to explain it to you. So first, let's make sure that we have Git successfully installed on our machine. I'm going to type git dash dash version and to list out the, the Git version that I'm using here. As you can see, Git is successfully installed on my machine and it's using 2.3. So now I'm searching around the internet and I come across this amazing project that I want to contribute to, Shama slash bears. Uh, what I first need to do to make edits uh, to this repo is I need to clone a copy uh, down to my machine so I can freely make edits. Now to do that, you will find a URL here to, uh, to clone it, uh, such as this uh, SSH URL. You likely will have this HTTPS uh, URL to clone here. And so I'm just going to copy and paste that and then go over to my terminal and type in git clone and paste in the, the location of the, the re repo or the remote source code that I want to copy down uh, to my local machine here. And so now you can see here that I have a folder called bears and inside that folder contains all the code that is uh, up on this repo. But now all of those files are on my local machine and they're available for me to edit. Now, keep in mind, you're free to make any edit that you wish in, in all of these changes and none of your changes or anything you do at this point won't be visible to anyone else until you decide to push them. So let's open up our editor on this folder here and make a change. Okay, so I'm just gonna go here and I'm gonna make a change to this readme. Um, I don't think the author has explained how much they like bears. So I'm gonna say, I love bears uh, and add that change for them. And so now if I wanna preview anything I've done um, and just get the general status of what's going on with my, uh, my project here, I can type in git status. Git status will tell you which files have been modified. It will also tell you which branch you are on. And you see here, I'm on the branch master. Now, a branch in Git is kind of like a pathway. There is a big main path that usually is called master. And the maintainer of the project controls which gets merged into master, which, which things get put onto the main pathway. Uh, since we are not the maintainer and we're not sure if the changes we make will get merged into master, we really should create our own branch. This is our own pathway that splits off of the main pathway master and hopefully will eventually get merged back into uh, master by the project maintainer. So to create our own branch, we type in git branch and we give our branch our name. So we'll say our dash feature is the name of our branch. And this will create our branch. And then if we want to move to that branch, you can see here I'm still on uh, the master branch, but we want to move to our new branch that we just created. I could do git checkout our feature. Now a shorthand if you just want to create a branch and move to it is to do git checkout dash b r dash feature, and this would both create the branch and move to it. So now that we have moved into our own branch, we are free to save the changes we made into this branch, uh, and it won't affect master branch, and it won't affect anywhere else, it's only on your local machine right now. Uh, and so the way that I really like to, to preview the changes I've made and commit them and decide is by doing git add dash p. And this will go through and it'll show you the difference on each file and let you say y or n on whether you want to include that change or exclude that change. It makes it a really nice flow if you just want to quickly go through and only include certain portions of it. 
Since I like this change where I've added this I love bears, and you can see here in the green text of the, the any, any changes that you've added, I'm gonna put yes and hit enter. And now when I type get status, I can see that this is now ready this has been staged. This is ready for me to commit or save into this branch. So saving your changes to the history of a project is called committing. Uh, so we now are ready to save this change that we have staged, this, this change to README. So we can type in git commit and dash m to supply a message. Uh, so made some changes to the README. And we can hit enter and we can save that. And now this, this change is now permanently saved into the history of this project only on our local machine. We have not pushed anything up remotely, so only you have this history. And since we created our own branch, it is only in this branch, so we have not affected the master branch. So we won't be making anyone mad. We're, we're perfectly safe here. And we can view this history by typing in git space log. And you can see here that we have the original commit from the maintainer and then the commit from ourselves uh, that we just committed. So everything up to this point has been on our local computer, but we're now ready to push these changes up for the maintainer of the project to review. Now, we need to define a remote place we're able to push our code to or publish our changes to. And by default, you'll have a remote location named origin. And this is likely already pointing to this original project. Now, this original project is owned by the maintainer. It's not owned by you. So you don't have permissions to push changes directly to this project. So what we need to do is we need to fork this into our own copy that we do have permissions to push changes to. And so to do that on GitHub, we simply go here to fork and we choose uh, the account that we want to fork it to. Um, and so since I'm already using Shama here, uh, my account, uh, to fork this, I'm gonna use Weekend Tacos um, as uh, a fork location here. And so this will be the remote location. Uh, this may be your account uh, that you're pushing changes to, but this will be my fork, my own copy of the project that I'm freely able to push changes to and um, get them ready for the maintainer of the original project to review. So now that we have our own fork, we need to point our remote location that we're pushing changes to, to our fork rather than the original project. And so to do that, I'm gonna copy this uh, URL to the project here. And I'm gonna type git remote set URL origin and then the name. So this is the name of our remote location and this is the actual location that we'll be pushing to. So now we're ready to push our changes to this remote location we've just defined. And at this point, other people may or may not see your code. Um, so just be warned. So I'm going to type in git push origin. That's the remote location that we're going to push our code to. And then we're going to give it our, the branch name that we're going to be pushing up. And so since we've committed everything to a branch name called r-feature, that's the one we're going to push to our origin, which is our fork of the project. So now when you go to GitHub, you can see here your changes down have been made to this uh, to your fork of the project. And you can drill down into the commits and, and view all the important information about that and kind of review things over. Now when you're ready to ask the maintainer of the project, of the original project, to review these changes, you want to open a pull request, which basically means you're requesting the maintainer to pull in your changes to their master branch or whatever their main branch or pathway is. And so to do that, we can click here on this button, compare um, pull request, or if you're on this branch, you can say new pull request. And this will give you an opportunity to review the changes you've made and review the commits you've made and supply a nice message to convince the maintainer to pull in your changes. Now, remember to be kind and patient with the open source maintainer. They are likely reviewing your work in their free time. And as the maintainer, they are ultimately responsible for whatever code gets merged into their project. So don't be offended if they ask you to make changes before merging or just outright reject your pull request as it's something that they're not interested in. So let's go ahead and type a message, merge this and open this pull request. Now, sometime later, the maintainer has come over and has said, you know, this, this message here, it doesn't have enough exclamation points. It definitely needs more exclamation points. Uh, more, not move, more, 
please. You know, the maintainer responds to you and asks you to add more exclamation points uh, to it. Now you don't need to create a whole new pull request and do all this process over again. You simply go here and make the changes that the maintainer has requested. I believe they requested uh, three exclamation points and go and do git add dash p to review the changes you've made. That's the one we want, we hit yes. And we say git commit add more exclamation points. And we've committed it to our history. We can do git log and view that history. And now we're ready to git push origin. And since we're still on this branch here called our feature, we're gonna push the changes we've made to our fork. And this is automatically going to update the pull request here with our commit and change it. So there's no need to add, open up a new pull request or do anything else. We simply just keep pushing to that same branch name and it will keep adding the commits here to the same pull request. So maybe you got busy or the maintainer of the project got busy and your pull request wasn't merged in in a timely manner and some additional changes from either other contributors or the maintainer themselves have made their way into master. And now when you go to your pull request, you see that you have, uh, this branch has conflicts and it must be resolved. This is basically means that the uh, more changes have been made that conflict with the changes that you've made. Uh, so you can see here that the maintainer actually added their own message, I love bears, but it in fact only has a period and not the three exclamations that you think that sh it should be. And the maintainer has also thought that it should be. So what we need to do is we need to bring your branch up to speed with the latest and fix this conflict. So to do that, we need to make sure we create a new remote location that points to this original project. And a common convention that people use is the word upstream. So origin points to your own copy that you are pushing and, and able to make changes to. And the upstream is a remote location that you can pull down from. You don't have permission to push to it, but you have permission to pull down changes to it so you can keep up to date with the upstream changes. So to do that, we're gonna do git remote add upstream and we're gonna name the location of this upstream project. And this will be the original project, shama.bears. So now that we have defined that remote, we can pull the changes from that remote into our branch to bring it up to speed. So to do that, we're gonna say git pull upstream, that's the remote location of the original project, master. We want to pull in the changes that were made to the master branch. Now, even though we are on our feature branch, we want the changes, the latest changes pushed to the main pathway, the main branch, and that's master here. So in doing so, it will notify us that we have a conflict here. There's a merge conflict in README, and if we do get status, it will also show us that there is a conflict. Um, and so as you can see here, when we go here, the changes we are suggesting here have I love bears with three exclamation points, but the changes that were done on master only have a single period. So at this point, we need to decide which version we want, which, which side of the conflict is the correct one that we want. And since we know and the maintainer has told us that the three exclamations is a desirable option, we're gonna remove all that other stuff around it and just keep the change that we want. And so at this point we can add, git add this readme change and now commit this result and we have resolved this conflict. So now our branch, our, our, our feature branch is up to date it's all the conflicts have resolved and it's up to date with the latest code that is from the original project. So we are now able to update our pull request with this latest code by doing git push origin, the, the remote location that we own, and then our branch name, our feature. And this will bring up our pull request up to speed here and able to merge it back into master now that we have resolved that conflict and, and got the latest code in. So I hope this video has helped introduce you to using Git to contribute to open source. And if it has, then please share the videos and help others. And if you wanna see more videos, then please subscribe. Thanks again for watching.